Allowing the fewest single game points in the 2024 playoffs, even without newest father Rudy Gobert and the lowest point total of their season to steal two on the road from the reigning champs, the Minnesota Timberwolves are historically overwhelming and it's shocking. Now eight wins from their first chip. Many made the Denver Nuggets quit. Jamal Murray both literally threw in the towel with it failing to hit the court, then threw a heat pack in a random classless and unforeseen act, clamping down to play the greatest Team D we've ever seen. The utter outclassing for Minnesota featured all of top tier on a string connectivity, playing for each other intensity, on point positioning, and consistent effort minute 1 through 48 on a possession to possession basis. It was just beautiful to watch. This 1990s grit had the internet going insane as we'll dive into momentarily, which trust you should stick around for. While Ants recently said he wants the MJ comparisons to stop, us hoop junkies can't help but discuss the undeniable. Quite frankly, the amount of evidence that we are witnessing MJ's long lost son is piling up. From their mannerisms as displayed in this interview, to their playing styles as displayed by this baseline fade in traffic comparison, as well as this freaky side-by-side -side of a drive through the lane against the Suns. And in Game 2 against Denver, Ant just did the MJ shrug after hitting a triple, so he's definitely playing mind games by saying he wants the comps to stop. The pure-as-it-gets passion that Nikhil Alexander-Walker plays with defensively, similarly to the man directly ahead of him in the depth chart in Jaden McDaniels, was showcased in this trending clip of Naw casually letting loose of a fat smile while clamping Murray, with how funny is to watch go to work on defense, seeing Nikhil guarding his cousin Shea in a potential conference finals matchup with OKC would be something I'd love to see. The leadership of Anthony Edwards in this second round has stood out as phenomenal and is a trait well ahead of the pack in terms of his fellow top young players. This mic'd up clip from game one displays just that. Hey, but look though, when you, when you playing off the catch, when you getting in there, take your time, set. Like when you get in there, I'll start one, don't be rushing, that's, that's how you make that layer, because you're rushing. As said by John Krasinski covering the Wolves for The Athletic, in consecutive series, the Wolves have taken apart Booker and Murray, frustrating them and reducing them to bickering with officials for fouls that aren't there. Personally, I was more confident in this game being over at halftime more than any other game I've watched this entire season, based off how commanding Minnie's domination was. After the Wolves put the Nuggets down 52 to 80, Nas Reed enthusiasts would state that the Nuggets took them 5280 jerseys too literally. That was gold. In a post reacting to this AE fader over two defenders, split screen with an MJ fader over two defenders that are eerily similar, Tony Clements suggests if Anthony Edwards doesn't want to be compared to Michael Jordan, he needs to stop doing this every night. And Ant can say what he wants to reporters up in his grill, but his play is doing the talking in terms of resembling MJ and a potential desire to do so. This take on X from Akash reads, Everyone talking about Drake hiding another child for 11 years, but MJ been hiding Anthony Edwards for 22. Multiple Wolves called this their best performance of the year. Nas Reed would state, quote unquote, I don't think I've ever seen us at that level. Chris Finch would state, quote unquote, We've had some really, really good defensive efforts this year, but that has to be right up there with the best of them. This post shows us the multitude of reactions from Nuggets Nation in the stands forced to watch Edwards kill their hopes and dreams of a dynasty. I know Cat gets hated on for his voice changing from one interview to the next and making cringe statements from time to time, but it's come to the point where people just gloss over Carl Anthony Towns' impact because of that. As written by Ben Stenar, Carl Anthony Towns deserves so much credit. This was his franchise. Then a 19-year-old kid from Georgia came into the building. Cat turned into the number two option and has done nothing but show great leadership and mentorship. The sacrifice Towns has made speaks volumes about the man's humbleness. And who says a bit of cringe in an NBA locker room or life in general for that matter is a bad thing. The vibes are always high for Towns. On that note, Shout out to the bench celebrations Minnesota gets with Luka Garza and Dacian Nix, who lead the pack of bench warming aura enhancers. After Nas Reed forcefully denied this Jamal Murray drive, sending Murray to the floor, this ex post split screens a screenshot of Reed swatting in stare down and a Muhammad Ali KO in stare down. That's hard. 
Kyle Anderson stepping up into the starting five to keep Reed in his normal routine in the rotation of coming off the bench like the sixth man of the year that he is, was very beneficial. Anderson, or by his Chinese name, Lee Kyer, was given high praise from the reigning finals MVP postgame. As Nikola Jokic stated, quote, Kyle Anderson's a really smart player. He knows what to do on the floor. He had eight assists and had nine rebounds. He was really affecting the game. He's just a high IQ guy and he knows what to do on the floor. End quote. My biggest takeaway from this Wolves 2-0 lead is that if LeBron couldn't beat Jokic for two years and Edwards is able to just come in and sweep him after losing last year to be fair but without Nas Reed or Jaden McDaniels, what does that say to us? For one, it signals a changing of the guard, but it also says a lot about the superstardom of Ant-Man to outduel such a special number one option as his counterpart being Jokic. James and Davis, two players who many consider to be top 10 on the planet, they lost 11 straight to Denver and 9 of 10 playoff games in two years. Anthony Edwards though as the 1A plus Carl Anthony Towns as the leaned upon second star good for 20 plus nightly mesh with what's a defense that's shaping up to be one of the greatest ever to make quick work of Denver, which says to me, the 2024 Timberwolves are a generational defense. In the aftermath of Minnesota's historically overwhelming performance that shocked us, opposing coach Mike Malone would put it bluntly and could probably use a blunt. As the Nuggets man in charge stated, quote, we got out coached, we got outplayed. You can feel sorry for yourself, or you can do whatever you can to try and be better come game three, end quote. But Ant-Man and his team will be expecting a massive Denver effort on the road, signaled by Anthony Edwards having this to say post-game. They're not going to come out and play like that again in game three. Um, we got to be ready to take their punch. And I always tell the team, like uh, when Finchie, when we huddle up and Finchie say, uh, we got to be ready to take their punch, I say, we're going to punch too. Shit, I mean, they're not the only one punching in the fight. So, I mean, yeah, just like that. They're not the only one that's going to come out punching. I don't give a damn if we go 3-0 for the game four, we're going to come out punching too. So they got to be ready to take our punch, and we'll be ready to take their punch. But, yeah, I don't see no slippage in their games. They just missed shots tonight. They'll be ready to go game three, and we will be. I was bewildered by Jamal Murray tossing two items onto the court back-to-back -back times. He made me look bad Golden State Warrior style for praising his mentality in my last Nuggets video. Chris Finch spoke on Murray's actions, saying it's inexcusable and dangerous. I don't know about you, but I have never seen anything like that from a player in two decades of being a sports fan, tossing stuff onto the court like a drunk fan at a baseball game. It's up in the air what Murray was thinking, given he left without talking to the media Dylan Brooks style. Subscribe to my channel and leave a thumbs up if you enjoy my content. There's a long list for you, but what was the most memorable moment of Game 2 for the current championship favorite, in my opinion, Timberwolves? Two shoutouts for my last upload and this one next time, so leave your take down below. This has been your boy D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.